It was 50 days ago that we gathered here to celebrate Easter Sunday. We remembered how Jesus, after being put to death on the cross, rose from the dead. We told the stories of the women who found the tomb empty and the angels who announced that he had risen. Though the apostles locked themselves behind closed doors out of fear of the Jews, Jesus appeared in their midst showing them that he was very much alive. And over the next 40 days, he would continue to reveal himself to his disciples and teach them the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. As we look back on those stories, we see a pattern that emerged. When Jesus appears, the disciples first have trouble recognizing him. In the case of the apostles, they are too caught up in their fear and disbelief to see him. In the case of Mary Magdalene, she is so full of grief that she cannot see past her tears to the Lord standing right in front of her. In response, Jesus says or does something to make himself known. He shows the wounds in his hands and his side, or the case of the disciples on the road to Emmaus, he breaks bread with them. Once their eyes are opened, the disciples react with joy that it is truly the Lord alive in their midst. Finally, Jesus tells them to make it known to others that he has risen from the dead. The women who discovered the empty tomb go at once to tell the apostles that Jesus has risen. The others that they had seen the Lord. They are not just to celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive, but rather they now are to proclaim this good news to others. We gather today because in the 2,000 years since Jesus rose from the dead, people of faith had been proclaiming the good news. Like them, we have received this gospel with joy and have come to believe that Jesus is truly alive and here among us in our midst. Like them, we then must go forth and proclaim that same good news to others so that they too can come and see and believe. Like those first disciples on Easter Sunday, we may have many obstacles to believing that Jesus is alive and to sharing that good news with others. Like Mary Magdalene, we may be so caught up in grief and sadness that we cannot see Jesus standing by our side. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we may be so caught up in the anguish over the bad news we see all around us that we cannot believe in the good news that Jesus has conquered evil once and for all. And like the apostles, we may be so afraid of failure, persecution, or our own weaknesses that we cannot go beyond the walls of our fears to witness our faith to others. Jesus understands our grief, our anguish, and our fears. That is why he has not only commanded us to go out and tell the good news that he is alive, but he has also given us the power to do precisely that. He has given us something greater than our fears, greater than our weaknesses, and greater than our sinfulness. He has given us a force. He has given us a power for good that no force for evil can ever withstand. My friends, that is the tremendous gift of the Holy Spirit. St. Luke gives us a moving account of the power of the Holy Spirit in today's first reading. With the force of a hurricane, the Holy Spirit fills the place where the apostles and the others are staying, the same place they had been hiding in out of fear. Then the Spirit came to rest on each of them in tongues of flames. 
each of them responds with ecstatic joy to the gift that they have received of the Spirit. They proclaim God's praises so loudly that people hear them in the streets and gather around to see what is taking place in that upper room. Though they are from many different countries, they hear the apostles speaking in their own native tongues. What is happening? The Holy Spirit is overcoming every obstacle the apostles have to proclaiming the good news. The Holy Spirit is overcoming their fear by giving them a joy so great that they cannot contain it. They cannot keep it to themselves. The Holy Spirit is overcoming their grief by putting within their hearts a love for God which can never be taken from them. The Holy Spirit is overcoming even the obstacles of language by making their words understandable by foreigners. With the Holy Spirit powering them, the apostles now can spread the good news that Jesus is alive through all the world. And the same, my friends, is true of us. That same Spirit which came upon the apostles and Mary on that first Pentecost Sunday with such power has been given to us through the Holy Sacrament of Baptism and Confirmation. The Holy Spirit is at work in each and every believer through faith. St. Paul tells us in today's second reading, to each individual the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. That Spirit helps us to overcome our sadness. It helps us to overcome our fear and our disbelief so that we can make Christ known to others. Like any gift, the gift of the Spirit must be put to use if it is going to be effective in our lives. Consider the first time you used a computer. It may have taken a while to figure out how to use this contraption. However, with time and with practice, we saw how much good we can do with it. My friends, the same is true with the Holy Spirit. Little by little, we learn to listen to his gentle presence in our hearts. We become responsive to the ways he is calling us to the Lord and calling us then to action. Then we begin to experience his power and actions in our own lives. We become increasingly transformed as his love takes over our lives. Then, like the apostles, we become captivated by a joy that we cannot keep to ourselves, a joy that overcomes our weaknesses, a joy that overcomes our fears. The risen Lord is alive and present among us through the Holy Spirit, active in the hearts of all believers. That Spirit empowers us to proclaim the good news by our words and actions. Our world is full of disbelief. It's full of fear and sadness. But my friends, you and I have an answer to their fear. We have an answer to their sadness. We have an answer to their disbelief. We have faith in Jesus Christ, one who was thought to be defeated by the wood of the cross, who was nailed and left to die, has risen from the grave and is not just residing in the four heavens, but is residing in each of us personally and intimately waiting for us to allow him to break out of our hearts into a world that desperately needs him. When I was visiting in Jerusalem this past, um, just last month, or this month I should say, last month, okay, we'll get the days right. One of the sites 
um, the, the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes, that there's a beautiful chapel, church built there. But off on the side is where the tabernacle is, and the tabernacle is behind a glass locked door. And I saw that, and I believed, and I, I felt that many Christians have Jesus locked behind a door in their hearts, and we have to let him out. We have to open our lives to others and share the victory of the cross, to share our victory over sin and death to change their mourning into joy, this sorrow into tremendous rejoicing. My friends, the Holy Spirit is alive and active, but needs us to cooperate with him. He needs us to open wide our lives, open wide our hearts, allowing his transforming power not only to change us, but to allow us to change the face of the earth one soul at a time as we give glory to God by our lives.